Hello. I just want you all to take a look at me real quick. I got a question for you. What do you think my net worth is? <laughs> See, I asked this question to a bunch of friends once, and they started throwing some numbers around. One guessed 8,000, another said 500, one said 50, and another said five. Now, I politely asked that person to leave. But after considering the fact that I'm an 18-year-old kid that hasn't had a job in about two years, and I don't have any bills or car payments, we settled on the approximate value of $670. <laughs> I have a net worth of $670. Bill Gates has a net worth of $79.2 billion. And Steve Jobs has a net worth of $10.2 billion. Those two individuals are the leaders of the technology industry. Andy Warhol, a famous artist who died back in 1987, at his death had a net worth of $220 million. Then you have Ray Bradbury, who's also passed away, a famous writer, and at his death he had a net worth of $30 million. Ben Carson, a famous neurosurgeon and a prominent individual in the medical industry, has a net worth of $10 million. And Tony Horton, the creator of P90X, and a leader in the fitness industry has a net worth of $10 million as well. So we have all these numbers up in space somewhere. So what do we do with numbers? Well, folks, we graph them. <laughs> Look at that. See, I'm not really a math guy, but based on what I see, I think Bill Gates is winning. So we've been able to quantify individual net worth, but you can also put a value on an industry as a whole. Let's take a look at that. So I provided you with examples of people from six different industries, the technology industry, the medical industry, fitness, art, and publishing. Technology is winning again by over 50%. It's worth $606 billion, with the medical industry trailing behind at $300 billion. I think that holds some significance. I think it's, you know, correct to say that here in America, we spend money on what we value. I mean, it just makes sense. You wouldn't spend money on something that's not important to you. It's, that would be foolish. So to put things into perspective for us, I created a pie chart. Same numbers that we just saw, the industry values, and technology is leading by 59%. Well, I mean, I think that makes sense. Technology is important to us. I mean, a new iPad costs $855. We're willing to spend that much money on something. So we've been able to quantify individual net worth. We've quantified industry worth. But here's a question for all of us. Can you put a price on a person? I'm not talking about their net worth. I'm talking about the value of that individual. That is said a word there, value. In order to answer this question, we have to consider individual value. Human value, what does value mean? Well, I have this definition and I'm not gonna read it to you. But I bolded a word for us, relative. Value is relative, well, relative to what? Well, in the context of what we're talking about, value is relative to majority opinion, to the popular stances. Something's value, a thing's value is only determined by the surrounding opinion of that thing. I mean, it makes sense. You determine worth, it's only determined by that importance. You know, what does that thing mean to you? What do you use it for? Is it a necessity? Is it a want? What is that thing? Well, when we consider this, we can answer our question. If industry worth is somewhat proportional to net worth, for the most part, there's room for error. You saw things flipped around on the chart. But in terms of technology, that truth is pretty consistent. Technology as an industry was worth the most. The people in the technology industry had the highest net worth. That says something. So if we spend money on what we value, and if net worth and industry worth are sort of proportional, and if industry worth sort of determines where people spend their money, and if worse people, where people spend their money sort of reflects their value and what they find to be important in their opinion of things, then net worth 
reflects, in terms of industry leaders, that industry leader's worth to society. Well, here's another question. What do we value? I think the charts and the pie chart and all the other graphs I showed you today all show that we value technology. I don't think that's an obnoxious statement by any means. I mean, I think it's pretty true. And for most people, they think that's a smart move. You know, technology, to many of us, is the symbol of human progress. I mean, the iPhone. Ten years ago, we couldn't even put a picture in our heads of a touchscreen cell phone, and now we all have them. I mean, technology is like the symbol of the information age. It's new. It's vibrant. It can do a lot of stuff. And that's important to us. But what about these other industries? I mean, let's just exclude the medical industry and, and the fitness industry. The, to many of us, that's just a necessity. We all have those. We think we need them. They're important to our health. But what about art, writing, and publishing? What about those industries? Do we not value them? What are we losing? Well, we're losing things like this. This is a painting by Caravaggio. What happens when we no longer value the visual expression of our ideologies and our beliefs? When we no longer hold dear to our hearts the visual expression of our belief in the divine or even lack thereof? We lose things like this. This is a painting by Vincent Van Gogh. What happens when we no longer value the expression of the abstract behind the realistic? The expression of what isn't necessarily tangible? The expression of what doesn't rest before our eyes. We have to remember that there is a difference between innovation and imagination, and that both are necessary to human progress. And where would society be without a painting of dogs playing poker <laughs> at a table? In my opinion, nowhere. <laughs> and we lose all of this to these things. It's a rectangle with a lot of little rectangles inside of it. And it can connect to the internet, and that's kind of cool. The internet is this wealth of information that we all have access to 24-7. You don't even have to memorize anything anymore. I mean, any historical event, you can find a Wikipedia article that pretty much tells you everything you need to know. If I ask you what 7 times 15 is, you're probably taking your phones out. I know what I did. It's 105, by the way. <laughs> but still, I mean, all the information you could ever need is up in this intangible sort of cloud of the internet. You have access to it all the time. You don't really need to store anything in your, in your head, but what kind of intellectuals have we become? We've become the kind of intellectuals that put their brains in their pockets, and that's an issue. We're not really using our, our heads, our brains, our minds for what they're meant to be used for. I mean, what more is the human brain than a camera and a microphone if you're not storing information in it? if you're not holding dear to your mind, your heart, and your soul, the information that's in front of you. I mean, how do we value information these days? You only look at it when you need it on your iPhone. It's not like you're memorizing it anymore. So think for yourself. I mean, put the phone away. Use your mind for what it's meant to be used for. Don't just use it as a camera and a microphone. I mean, actually memorize something. Take the time to internalize information that is valuable to you. And with these thoughts in mind, I ask you to consider this question. What do you consider to be valuable? Do you value the brain in your pocket that's limited by battery power and a Wi-Fi connection? Or do you value the limitless possibilities of the human mind? Thank you.